I am 44 years old and I would like my husband to go to intimacy therapy. He says there's nothing wrong with him. During the 2020 infection 19 lockdown, we spent a lot more time together than normal. We fell in love with each other again and had a lot of intimacy. At one point, we began to explore and experiment. He wanted to try butt stuff. And although I was never into that, I tried. I didn't like it. It hurt. We tried different positions, lubes, etc. But it wasn't really working. My husband, however, was very into it and wanted to keep trying, even though he knew I didn't like it and that it hurt. One day, for a totally unrelated topic, I went into his phone to look something up on Google. I opened up the history tab and was shocked to find window after window of intimacy videos. All of it was themed with teenager gets butt stuff for the first time. I was disgusted. I sat him down and told him how I felt. Our kids were preteens, so I asked him if they were safe. He said yes. He said that intimacy videos always sends you to these sites with young girls. I look at intimacy videos. I know that's BS. I explained that A, I no longer wanted to have butt stuff intimacy because of the pain, and B, because now every time we had butt stuff intimacy, I would be wondering if he wants a teen. He agreed, and after some more discussions, we went back to normal. But now he began to finger my anus. I know that some people like this, and I am not trying to embarrass them or say that it's wrong, but for me, it wasn't pleasing at all. I noticed that he only did it when he was about to release. So I asked him if he needed to do that in order to orgasm. He said no. So I asked him not to do it anymore. He did as I asked, but ever since then, we have been having multiple intimacy problems, mostly because he can no longer orgasm if he does not put his finger in my anus. He blames stress from work, the kids being in the house, the bed making too much noise, but no matter what, the end result is always the same. No finger in the hole, no orgasm for him. I asked him to go to an intimacy therapist, but he says he doesn't need it and that my nagging about it is not helping, which is probably true. The thing is, and I know I shouldn't feel this way, but I feel like I no longer please him as a woman. Intimacy relations have become very stressful. Is he gonna put his finger there? Do I let him? Do I not? And then have him not orgasm? Do I keep nagging for him to go to a therapist or leave him alone? I can't talk to anyone about this so I could really use the help of random, anonymous strangers. So, would I be in jerk if I tell him that I need him to go to intimacy therapist? Update, it's been 16 hours since I posted, and over 300 of you have responded. I wanted to clarify a few things. First of all, I have been with my husband for 20 years. Many people asked why I didn't just leave. He is a good man, he ticks all the boxes. This has been happening only for the last three years, so relatively a blip in our relationship. Secondly, yes, he has continued to do it every so often, which is how I know that this is the only way he can release, even though I asked him to stop. I did tell him that it was not right and that he was getting off on my pain. He always agrees, says he won't do it again. Thirdly, some of you said that I'm the jerk for asking if my kids were okay. I wonder what you would feel if I was having intimacy with a teenage boy and randomly sticking dildos up his butt. Would that be okay with you? If I was watching it and getting off on it, would it be okay? Would you wonder if your teenage son would be okay being taken care of by me? Lastly, after seeing the messages, I decided to speak to him again. I told him that I could not keep going this way that I still loved him, but was not willing to continue having intimacy with him if this was the outcome every time. He said he was going to get an appointment with a doctor. He is still not willing to see a therapist, but says that his problem is physical rather than mental, so seeing a doctor might help him. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, my wife and I tried butt stuff play. I was very interested in it, but she was not. She absolutely dislikes butt stuff intimacy. She doesn't like any kind of butt stuff penetration. If she really enjoys oral intimacy, some gentle external pressure enhances her experience. You know how I dealt with this? By only engaging in activities that we both enjoy simultaneously. You have a terrible husband, not the idiot. Comment two, not the idiot. He needs help not because he likes butt stuff, but because he's clearly disregarding your boundaries. You're allowed to have boundaries. He's not allowed to violate them or pressure you. 
It's kind of intimacy assault-like, to be honest. You even tried butt stuff. It sounds like more than once, except no as an answer, dude. You wouldn't even be in jerk if you decide he has crossed a line and call the police. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a chaotic few days, and I've got some updates that I think you'll find pretty interesting. So, after my husband agreed to see a doctor instead of an intimacy therapist, I was cautiously optimistic. We've been through a lot together, and I was hoping this could be a turning point. You see, before all this started, we had a pretty strong connection. We met in college, and it was like we were meant for each other. We've supported each other through job losses, family drama, and all the ups and downs of raising kids. That's why I couldn't just walk away from 20 years of marriage without trying everything. The doctor's appointment was set for two days later. In the meantime, things at home were tense. We were both walking on eggshells, trying to avoid any confrontation. But then, the night before the appointment, things took a turn. My husband came home from work and I could tell something was off. He was quiet during dinner, and afterwards, he pulled me aside and said we needed to talk. He confessed that he had been struggling with his attraction to the taboo nature of what he was watching online. He said it started as a curiosity, but had spiraled into something he felt he couldn't control. He was ashamed and scared, and he didn't know how to stop. I was shocked. I had no idea it had gotten this bad. I felt betrayed, but also worried for him. It was a side of him I had never seen before. The next day, we went to the doctor together. The doctor was understanding, but suggested that this issue might be more psychological than physical and recommended an intimacy therapist after all. My husband was resistant, but after a long emotional conversation in the car, he agreed to go. It was a huge step and I was proud of him for taking it. We found a therapist who specialized in intimacy issues and made an appointment. The first session was intense. My husband opened up about his fears and insecurities, things I had never heard him talk about before. He admitted that he felt like he wasn't enough for me, that he had to resort to these fantasies to be satisfied. It was heartbreaking to hear, but it also made me understand him a bit more. The therapist worked with us on communication and trying to rebuild our intimacy without the need for that specific act. It was hard work, and there were moments when I wasn't sure if we could get past this. But we kept at it, determined to find a way back to each other. Then, just when things seemed to be improving, I found out something that shook me to my core. I was cleaning the house when I stumbled upon a hidden folder on our shared laptop. It was filled with pictures of me, but not just any pictures. They were photoshopped images of me as a teenager, in compromising positions. I felt sick. It was like a punch to the gut. I confronted him immediately and the look on his face said it all. He broke down, apologizing profusely. He said he created them during a particularly low point and had forgotten they were there. He begged for my forgiveness, promising it would never happen again. I was torn. On one hand, I was disgusted and felt violated. On the other, I could see he was genuinely remorseful and struggling with something much deeper than I realized. We had another emergency session with the therapist where we unpacked this new revelation. It was the most difficult conversation of my life. We're still working through it. It's not easy, and there are days when I'm not sure if I can move past the hurt and the betrayal. But I see the effort he's putting in, the changes he's making. He stopped watching intimacy videos altogether and is focusing on our relationship. My wife goes nuclear on my brother's fit wife over her diet, but when she tries it herself and fails, oh boy, the tables turn. I will try to make this short and instead answer any questions for info or clarification because I don't know what details to include or how far back I need to go. I love my wife, but I am aware of her bad as well as her good qualities. One of her bad ones is blaming others when things don't exactly go her way. We are 35 and we have been together since we were 17. She has never been happy with her weight and has gone on or believes that she has diet for as long as I've known her, but she has gained around 25 kilograms since I met her. What bothers me about it is seeing her hurting about it. She is very beautiful and almost always the prettiest woman in the room, 
I wish she saw that she turns heads, but better yet, I wish she would ignore this superficialness altogether because she is amazing in other ways and very well loved by me, her family and friends, neighbors, colleagues, etc. My brother and his wife, 40, are very close to us and we do much together. My sister-in-law is very fit. The week before Christmas, we four booked a two-week vacation. My wife, being so self-conscious, was always irritated the first days and uncomfortable with her body, while sister-in-law just chilled around in her bikinis and summer dresses. Anyway, on our second day, sister-in-law ordered both fries and ice cream and some beers. Apparently, my wife was watching everything she ate. During these two days, my wife made comments every time we ate about how unfair it was for the sister-in-law to eat whatever she wanted. However, on the second day, sister-in-law, as I warned my wife, had enough because she was apparently very upset about the comments. She told my wife that it wasn't true that she ate more than my wife. My wife got defiant and started talking about metabolism, which my sister-in-law said is very overused and that most people have a normal metabolism. She made a comment that my wife only saw when she had a salad and when the sister-in-law had an ice cream, never the whole picture. My wife disagreed, so sister-in-law dared her to eat exactly what she ate during the remainder of the vacation and see what happened. Exactly the same foods and amounts. Wife agreed and said that she's been dieting her whole life and still gained weight, so eating normal now will only make it worse. The sister-in-law said that my wife gained only on periods between because she would binge before starting. My wife lost three kilograms, and throughout our vacation, she was complaining about how she didn't have energy and that the sister-in-law was eating less on purpose. I told her that she wasn't eating less or we would have noticed. My wife got upset when I said that the sister-in-law was right and maybe my wife should either love herself like she is or admit that her weight is 100% her own doing. The sister-in-law told her, I told you so, and I said that I had to agree with her. Now my wife hasn't spoken to me since. Was I wrong? Was I the AH? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. You're right that your wife likes to blame other people for her own problems. She sounds like the typical lifelong dieter who binge eats and then will half-heartedly follow some extreme diet for a short period, followed by more binge eating. Of course, she has gained weight throughout her marriage. She has an eating disorder. She needs to get professional help but it's not okay for her to harass other people who don't have eating disorders. You need to stop giving in to her fits. It's not your job to constantly soothe her ego. Comment two, there is so much to unpack here. First, your wife needs some therapy for what you describe as an eating disorder. Second, the fact that she is acting like a five-year-old and not talking to you for two weeks implies she needs therapy. In general, she needs professional help, something no matter how much you love her, you can't do for her. And if she isn't willing to get help, this problem will only fester and become a bigger problem. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a month since my last post about the vacation with my wife and my brother and his wife. I got a lot of feedback and questions, so I thought I'd give you an update on what's been happening since then. So after the whole diet challenge thing, things were pretty tense between my wife and me. She was really mad at me for siding with my sister-in-law. I mean, I get it. It was a tough pill to swallow, being confronted with the reality of her eating habits. But I didn't expect her to stop talking to me completely. It was like living with a ghost who was really good at giving the silent treatment. Now my wife has always been the type to hold a grudge. I remember this one time, back in college, she didn't speak to me for a week because I forgot our anniversary. I had to pull off this grand romantic gesture just to get her to crack a smile. So I knew I was in for a long haul, but this time I didn't want to just patch things up with a grand gesture. I wanted to really address the issue. So after a week of cold shoulders, I decided to try and talk to her. I told her I loved her no matter what and that I was sorry for hurting her feelings. I explained that I just wanted her to be happy and healthy and that I was worried about her. She finally opened up and admitted that she was embarrassed and felt like I had betrayed her by agreeing with my sister-in-law. She said she felt like everyone was against her. 
I reassured her that wasn't the case, and we had a long emotional talk about everything. Now, here's where the juicy compromise comes in. We agreed that we would both start being more mindful of our eating habits and exercise together. It wasn't about losing weight for her anymore. It was about being healthy for both of us. We started cooking meals together, which was actually kind of fun. We tried out new recipes, some healthy, some not so much, but it was about balance. And let me tell you, the first time we went jogging together, it was a disaster. My wife hadn't run since high school, and I wasn't exactly in shape either. We must have been quite the sight, huffing and puffing around the neighborhood. But we kept at it, and it got easier. We even started to enjoy it, which was a surprise to both of us. But the real shocker came when my brother and his wife invited us over for dinner. My wife was nervous, but she agreed to go. I was bracing myself for an awkward evening, but it turned out to be anything but. My sister-in-law pulled my wife aside and apologized for the way she had handled the situation on vacation. She admitted that she could have been more sensitive to my wife's feelings and my wife apologized for the comments she had made about my sister-in-law's eating habits. They hugged it out, and it was like a weight had been lifted off everyone's shoulders. The rest of the evening was great. We all laughed and joked like we used to. It felt like old times. And when my sister-in-law served dessert, my wife didn't make any comments or give any looks. She just enjoyed it, and that was a big step for her. Since then, things have been a lot better. My wife and I are still working on our health journey together, and it's brought us closer. She's even started talking to my sister-in-law again, and they're back to being friends. But the biggest surprise came just last week, and my wife stepped on the scale and found out she had lost a few more kilograms. She was ecstatic, not because of the number, but because she felt good. She had more energy, and she was happier. And that's all I ever wanted for her. May's rude to me in class, so I keep my distance, but when she invites me to her party and confesses her crush, things get complicated with her friend. There's this girl, May, 16-year-old in my biology class. She sits right in front of me, so we interact daily. If exhaustion were a person, it would be her. Let me explain. Throughout the year, I have always been very polite to May, as I am with everyone else. I like giving people positive affirmations and consider myself to be a high energy person. But then there's May. She just sucks the energy right out of me. She is difficult to say the least and seems to dislike me for whatever reason. We are often placed in the same small group to work on in-class assignments. In these conversations, she regularly disregards whatever I say or rolls her eyes whenever I make a point. The most irritating thing she does is interrupt me while looking me straight in the eye. I can confidently say I've ignored all of this and have remained polite to May. Actual things that I've said to her include, that's a really smart idea, May. And then her literal response was, it's called being competent. Do you know what that means? Another time, I said something like, hi, May, you look really nice today. And she said, thanks, you almost look average today. On top of this, like 40% of the jokes she tells end with me being the butt of them. These instances are on a good day. On a bad day, she's snappy as hell and I avoid conversation. So yesterday, after biology, one of May's friends, Susan, 16 years old, came up to me and asked if I wanted to go with her and May and chill at a nearby cafe. Despite Susan being good friends with May, I like Susan, she's cool. However, for obvious reasons, I declined. Susan accepted this and I saw her walk up to May, but I didn't stick around since the bell rang. When I was at my locker, May and Susan walked up to me. May then told me that she wanted me to go with her and Susan to a cafe. I wasn't in the mood to deal with her, so I kind of just laughed and said something along the lines of, LOL, why would I want to do that? I'm dead ass not lying when I say this girl started pouting and almost begging me to come along. I then said something like, I don't think being with you for longer than 80 minutes would be good for my health. I said it sarcastically, but it worked since she then stopped bugging me. That evening, I was texting Susan and she happened to mention that May was pretty upset that I didn't go with them. I just responded with the shrugging emoji and Susan then sent the yikes face one. She then suggested that I apologize to May since she was very disappointed. 
She even suggested that I make up some excuse for why I didn't come along, but I declined all this. Later, on my friend's group chat, one of them mentioned how word of May being upset about me not wanting to go had reached him. This one friend also said I should apologize since she was apparently really upset, according to his girlfriend, but I refused and said that I'd just act like nothing happened. Am I the idiot? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, May thinks negging you is flirting. You're not the jerk, NTA, of course. She probably has no clue why you rejected her. Teenagers are often stupid like that. She thinks it's totally normal to troll guys that she's into. In her mind, trying to go to the cafe with you was basically May shooting her shot. She was sure that buttering you up with all those insults would make you interested in her. Comment two, pass along the reason why to these middlemen friends. Why would I apologize for wanting to avoid someone that constantly grieves me? Her hobby is to shoot talk me every time I'm near her. Only a clown would volunteer for more of that. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been a month since I last posted about May, the girl from my biology class who's been giving me a hard time. I've got an update for you all. And let me tell you, it's been a tense ride. So after I refused to apologize to May for not going to the cafe with her and Susan, things took a turn. The next day in class, May was her usual self, rolling her eyes and making snide remarks. But then, out of nowhere, she passed me a note. I was expecting some sarcastic comment, but instead, it was an invitation to her birthday party. I was shocked. Why would she invite me after everything? I decided to go, thinking maybe this was her way of extending an olive branch. The party was at her house, and it was pretty nice. May actually seemed to be in a good mood, and for the first time, we had a real conversation without any insults. It was nice. But then, the twist, May's cousin, who I'd never met before, pulled me aside and told me something I never expected. May had a crush on me. All this time, her attitude and the way she treated me were because she didn't know how to deal with her feelings. I was floored. It made sense in a weird way, but I couldn't believe it. I confronted May about it, and she admitted it was true. She said she was sorry for being so mean, but she didn't know how else to get my attention. We ended up talking for hours and I started to see a different side of her. She wasn't just the difficult girl from bio class. She was complex with her own insecurities and fears. We started hanging out more after that, just the two of us. It was nice getting to know her better. We had a lot in common and I actually started to like her back. Things were going great or so I thought. Then came the confrontation. One day, Susan pulled me aside and told me she was upset. She had liked me for a while and was the one who had convinced May to invite me to the party. She felt betrayed that May and I were getting close when she was the one who liked me first. I had no idea Susan felt that way, and now I was stuck in the middle of a mess. I talked to May about it, and she was just as surprised as I was. She didn't know Susan liked me, and now she felt guilty for getting in the way of her friend's feelings. It was a mess, and I didn't know what to do. In the end, May and I decided to cool things off. We didn't want to hurt Susan, and our friendship was important to us. It was a bittersweet decision. I had gotten to know May and liked her, but I couldn't be the reason for a rift between her and Susan. So now, we're back to being just classmates. We're friendly, but there's always this underlying tension. Susan is still upset, and I feel bad for being the cause of it all. It's a weird situation, and I'm not sure where things will go from here. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.